spelling English words can be so futile and exasperating Rules are so indefinite and ultimately complicating Why can't English spelling be more standardized and simplified Than you could read without the feeling that you have been stupefied Hello, I'm Fred Cooper with Sing and Learn I'm here to introduce you to our new spelling to classical music this program consists of a 160-page book and two CDs with 35 songs that present the rules of spelling and phonics to music in a way that makes them fun to learn and easy to recall. It uses popular well-known melodies from classical music. You will recognize most of these tunes from the movies, from TV shows, and even from the background music you hear while walking around in the supermarket. The book has the words of the songs, a description of the various spelling rules, and lists of words that follow each of these rules. There are over 5,000 spelling words in the book. Now let me take you on a tour of some of the music. The song you heard at the intro to this video is something we call the Modern Major Spelling Song, done to the music of Gilbert and Sullivan's very well-known musical, the Pirates of Penzance. The very next song you will hear is The Syllable Song, done to a popular march. It tells how to divide a word into its basic syllables. Take a listen. Oh, syllables are parts of words that you can see or say. If you can spell the syllables, your words will be okay. Divide your words into syllables by following some simple rules. If you can learn these basic principles, spelling will be cool. Each syllable has a vowel sound that could be short or long. Or it could have a different sound that doesn't make it wrong. Next, Listen to a clip from one of our phonics songs that tells how to pronounce the sounds of the letter G. It's done to the melody of a famous Chopin waltz. G sounds depend on the letters that follow. This must be learned by every good scholar before E, I, and Y. The J sound is better. G will say G before all other letters. Genetics, ginger, geranium, gypsy, gymnasium. Learn the exceptions and you will be wiser. Words like it, girls give and geyser. Most of the songs are spelling songs that teach the various options for spelling the sounds of the English language. Here's a clip from the song for the spelling of awe, as in awesome or dawn. You'll recognize the music as a John Philip Sousa march called the Liberty Bell March. When you spell the sound of off, there are some rules to learn. Some are complicated, some are easy to discern. Just learn the letter combinations, there are just a few. And when you finish with this task, you know something new. When T is the final letter, there's a handy rule. A-U-G-H and O-U-G-H are very often used. There's a song that deals with homophones. Homophones are words that sound the same, but have different spellings and different meanings. For example, the word mite can be spelled M-I-T-E, referring to a small insect, or it can be spelled M-I-G-H-T, referring to strength or power. Listen to a little clip. Homophones are words that sound like each other. Homophones are words that sound just the same. But they have different spellings and their meanings aren't the same. They're unlike their matching words in almost every other way.
Many English words are derived from Greek or Latin words we call roots or root words. Here's a clip from a song we call prefixes, suffixes, and root words. Root words are the basic words most come from other languages. Greek and Latin words and roots are often used in English words that you combine with prefixes and suffixes each day. We hope you will enjoy the concept of learning the rules of phonics and spelling to great music. In another demonstration video, we'll show you just how this program works. Unfortunately, English spelling's never ever going to change it. If you don't get used to it, you surely will become deracial. Learn the rules and memorize them. Bite your tongue and close your eyes. And one day in the spelling bee, you'll be the one to win the prize.